Tinneror, Niall Ligo, the opening gambit from Eric going up against Xerneas and Kartana. Honestly, Eric's got a fantastic matchup here. He does, and that's just because of that Incineroar and that Nile Ego. They're fantastic typing and they're amazing access to coverage moves. Incineroar, as we've seen on stream all weekend, all format, all year even, um, it, access to Fake Out can threaten that Kartana with something like a Flare Blitz has already weakened its attack with the Intimidate, which may help its partner Nile Ego find an opportunity to connect a very strong poison type move with that Xerneas sitting across from the field from it you know if I were in Eduardo's shoes I certainly wouldn't want to keep both these Pokemon on the field because depending on how Eric decides to play this turn one even if he plays it a bit slower with a fake out and some other move from that Nile Ego you know he certainly is going to need the support from these Pokemon later well the Kartana leaves the field for Eduardo in place of his own Incineroar getting Intimidate down maybe trying to help out a little bit against Eric's Incineroar Xerneas protecting itself well aware of the threat posed to it by the Nile Ego Incineroar's U-turn will land into the newly uh, present Incineroar. A little bit of damage there, but allowing Eric to just manipulate his board state after seeing the switches from Eduardo. Uh, the Incineroar leaving the field without doing much else, and Kyoga, the switch in, applying immediate pressure to that Incineroar through its tight matchup, maybe forcing another switch early on the ground on, most likely in the back for Eduardo. That would then reveal all four of his Pokemon, if that's the case. Anaya goes up to move uh, next. Of course, Kyoga has to Primal Revert first, bring Primordial C to the field. Anaya Ligo revealing the Trick Room, not trying to attack into something like this Xerneas. Anaya Ligo cracking out one of those moves that a lot of people may forget it has. Uh, this makes things really interesting. It's a very interesting Trick Room user as well because Nile Ego is known to be a fast Pokemon and usually you only see Trick Room on fast Pokemon for the case of a Pokemon like Gengar who can use its Mega Evolution to trap Pokemon on the field and otherwise give it a better opportunity. But fortunately for Eric, you know, the threat of that fake out from the Incineroar with a combination of the Intimidate really onto the Kartana, I think gave Nile Ego the opening that it needed to get that speed control up. Now, even even if Eduardo switches out one of his two Pokemon on the field to go for, you know, getting the Groudon on and getting that weather up, he's going to have to take a lot of damage in the process. Yeah, well, the big thing here, of course, we do open the turn up with a Snarl from Incineroar. Incineroar benefiting pretty well, actually, uh, from that Trick Room. It is the uh, slowest Pokemon. And oh, the Snarl does oh enough man. through the damage dealt and, of course, the reduction in special attack, meaning Incineroar takes that water that's spout. Uh, that's something you don't often see. It does recover health with its berry. Xerneas up next, Moonblasting Nihiligo. That'll bring it way, way like oh. far away. And the Snarl oh. and the special attack drop from Moonblast are going to cause so many problems. Sludge Bomb will land oh on the Xerneas, goodness. and it's not enough for the knockouts. So even though the speed control was completely against Eduardo, uh, two drops to the special attack of Nihiligo and one to the Kyoga leave him very much in this game. Yeah, unfortunately, that Xerneas is going to have to wait for the end of Trick Room to come back in if it wants to have any chance of dealing damage. But this gives Eduardo an amazing opportunity to, you know, maybe allow uh, that Xerneas to get knocked out so that he can send in one of the Pokemon in the back of his party. Maybe that Kartana again, or maybe that mystery fourth Pokemon you know, unopposed. Incineroar just, I mean, look at how incredibly executed that was. The Snarl dropped the special attack. It did just enough damage to the Kyogre to allow it to survive that water spout and get that Pinchberry back and get its health back. Such an amazing play. You know, that's something that he had to have prepared for going into this tournament. Yeah, well, Xerneas protects itself, doesn't want to get caught by another early water spout in the turn. Incineroar will U-turn, uh, landing on this Kyogre, helping out a little bit, of course, with the damage that water spout may potentially deal. And this gives Eduardo the opportunity to switch things around. Don't forget, Airlock is currently in play with the addition of the Rayquaza. Um, so if that last Pokemon is going to be the Groudon, he may have to wait for it. The Katana does come in in the place of the Incineroar. Water Spout heading out from this Kyogre. It's taking a little more damage, and Katana taking that with a plomb. 
I really like how the U-turn was used to execute that switch as well that turn. You know, Eduardo just keeping playing very safe on the off chance that Eric would switch in that Rayquaza, thinking that Groudon would be making an appearance. Now, even if Eduardo switches in that Groudon or gets it in due to the fact that Xerneas or another Pokemon on the field gets knocked out, you know, as long as that Rayquaza and Kyogre are side by side, that Groudon has to be very afraid of any water type attacks that could target it. Well, they're not going to be side by side anymore. We've got the Incineroar switch in. This is such an obvious trade-off, right? The Kyogre's scared of the Kartana, so bring in something the Kartana is scared of. So scared, it's starting out the turn with a Detect. Uh, no damage going down that way. Rayquaza will extreme speed that Xerneas removed from play before it's given the opportunity to do anything in this turn. And this really starts to carve out a bit of an advantage, I think, for Eric. It does. And, I mean, fortunately for Eduardo, he does have the opportunity to get his Incineroar in here, you know, match the threat of the fake out from Eric, and also intimidate the Rayquaza and the Incineroar on his, his side of the field. You know, that Kartana is going to be intimidated, and it doesn't have the best matchup against Rayquaza and Incineroar in general. So he gets the Intimidate, but he needs to figure out how to navigate to an advantageous board position. Whereas Eric on the other side, you know, both the Pokemon on the field still have the benefit of Trick Room for him. You know, they're both at full health. Kyogre and Nihiligo as well are still in play. And honestly, if Eric wants to, if Ed Ed Eduardo's strategy centers around trying to stall out the remainder of Trick Room, Nihiligo can always come back in and set it right back up. Well, Nihiligo coming in there, a nice switch. Uh, the uh, U-turn from Incineroar not doing too much at all. And of course, you know, Eric doesn't want to get involved in these fake out mirrors, trying to weave in those attacks and making sure that something like that Intimidate is safe for later is always nice. Both trainers are back at it. Groudon will come in in place of that Incineroar, so we get confirmation that that is Eduardo's fourth and final Pokemon. And the big problem for him now is, of course, Kyogre's still very much available for him, uh, for Eric in the back, and able to deal with that Groudon with ease, either by getting control of the weather itself, or Rayquaza sticking around in this regular form before the uh, strong winds come through. Uh, Rayquaza setting up for a little bit later. The Swords Dance are becoming really important. Kartana's knockoff will land on this Rayquaza. Doesn't do that much damage, but removes the Aguave Berry. And that Rayquaza is, is going to be a huge threat to anything on Eduardo's side of the field. That is great information for Eduardo, though. This Rayquaza with the Aguave Berry, one of the Pinch Berries, has been a set that's really picked up popularity here at the World Championships because it allows you to, you know, play that Rayquaza a bit bulkier, maybe take a couple of hits, certainly nothing from a Xerneas, but that's probably what the Kartana is for, looking at Eric's team. The Rayquaza has the Sword Stance up, you know, it, it will be able to get a couple of turns of attacking with the benefit of that attack boost, and even if Eduardo finds finds a way to safely sort of navigate in that Incineroar. You know, the Kyogre's still in the back, the Nihiligo's on the field, and all those Pokemon are just very scary for both the Groudon and the Incineroar to be staring down. You have to be looking at this board position if you're Eduardo and thinking to yourself, you know, my win condition might be somewhat of a long shot. Is there any information I can get from this game? Or is there any maybe like tricks I have hidden up my sleeve that will allow me to sort of bring myself into an advantageous position? Well, we'll see exactly uh, how he decides to navigate through this turn. Nihiligo felled very quickly uh, by the Leaf Blade from the Kartana on Eduardo's side. Kartana benefiting from the Beast Boost now, able to raise its attack. Uh, Rayquaza will fire back with a Dragon Ascent uh, heading towards that Kartana, so may not be around for too long uh, to take the most advantage of it. And no doubt there after the Swords Dance that he's going to be able to get that knockout. Uh, easy pickup, of course. Rayquaza does lose its defenses a little bit, but Groudon's Fire Punch heading over towards that Rayquaza. Not very effective and not very much damage either. No, but I like how that um, Kartana was able to knock out the Nihiligo before it could go for something like the Trick Room again. You know, y yes, you still have a very uh, tall order if you want to win this game one, if you are as Eduardo, because your Groudon and your Incineroar are your last Pokemon. And the fact that Eric just sent in the Kyogre on his side of the field means that this Kyogre will be able to go for water attacks and Groudon, you know, won't be able to use things like the Fire Punch to, to attack that Rayquaza 
Kaza anymore until that Kyogre is removed from the field. It's just going to be a very tough sort of situation to navigate. He has the benefit of the fake out, and I think he has the benefit of the fact that the Scroudon, thanks to the Intimidate from that Incineroar as well, you know, should be able to take one of these attacks from the Rayquaza, assuming that it is something like a Dragon Ascent or an Extreme Speed, which are the two attacks we've seen so far. But again, he just needs to find a way to allow the Groudon to do what it does best. And the fact that it's slower than this Kyogre, at least from this turn, is not going to help. Yeah, Incineroar and Groudon both knocked out very comfortably by a Water Spout from Eric's Kyogre. That's going to give him game one here in the top 16 at the World Championships. And honestly, a game that was kind of decided a couple turns ago, right? Yeah. It was one of those games that as soon as he figured out exactly what his win condition was, that win condition being saving Kyogre, he's been in such a fantastic position. So Eric Rios is going to be up one nothing over Eduardo Cunha. Really exciting game to see play out. One of those that was kind of decided at a certain point. There was no real way out, and Eduardo is going to have to bounce back very quickly if he wants to keep his tournament alive here. What an interesting last turn from Eduardo and Eric, though. I mean, usually when you see one trainer favor Trick Room, you know, as their form of speed control, their Pokemon are going to be running, you know, the lowest possible speed. You know, you want to have those natures that maybe will detract from your speed in favor of some of your other stats. Uh, but in this case, you know, we saw that Kyogre move first, even though Trick Room had expired. You know, only Eduardo really knows what that means at this point in time. It might have been a speed tie. It might have been something else. But I think that's going to be really key to sort of point out as we go into this game, too. If Eric decides to rely on Trick Room again, this might mean that Eduardo has an opportunity to use that Groudon in the Trick Room to his advantage. Another thing that might be interesting if both these trainers lead those you know primal reversion pokemon into this game too if groudon really is slower than that kyogre or even if their speeds are equal there is a chance that the sunlight would be set up over the rain and then again putting that groudon in an advantageous position you know i certainly think that uh, you know eduardo might not want to switch up the pokemon you know I, I think those are the right ones he wanted to bring into that game but overall, um, just really interesting speed control. And I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out as we go into this game, too. I think one of the most interesting kind of adaptations that could be made for me is Eduardo could actually try and bring Aerodactyl. We understand it's the token Pokemon. It's going to be like one of those things that it's just there to, to do a specific job. And, you know, there it is. It's, it's right, right in the lead for it. us. Uh, I got a little preview there as well. But, you know, it, if you see the same four that you saw in game one, then you know it's in a good position, right? The only adaptation that can be forced is, of course, that Tapu Koko that comes in. Now, Niall Ego can't really threaten it all that much. Incineroar, really not able to put that pressure down. And I think this board position with the Aerodactyl is much better. Uh, of course, you do have to worry about Niall Ego potentially trick rooming while you decide to uh, set up something like a Tailwind with Aerodactyl. But overall, you know, Aerodactyl trying to prove it can do more than just be a unique and interesting choice, prove that it actually provides something to this team composition. And you have to wonder, I mean, when Eduardo was building this team, there must have been something specific about Aerodactyl that jumped out at him. And hopefully we'll get to see that revealed as we start this game. And it, I like how the Kartana is being saved for later. And this Intimidate certainly will help out the Aerodactyl as well. The Incineroar coming in, just putting down that in, uh, Intimidate this turn, providing that fake out pressure next turn. And actually being a Pokemon that can be quite slow in the Trick Room, uh, speaking of Pokemon that aren't slow in Trick Room, <laughs> the Aerodactyl Mega Evolving right here, putting itself in a good position to deal more damage. Fake Out will land on it this turn. Uh, Aerodactyl obviously flinching and being unable to move. And Nile Ego immediately Trick Rooming right now, uh, making sure that this Aerodactyl isn't going to be given too many opportunities to land big attacks. It won't, but Eduardo does have one turn to use Fake Out to try and maybe buy this Aerodactyl time or otherwise give him an opportunity to rotate it out so he can come back in once Trick Room has concluded. I really like how Eric uh, played that turn very safe. You know, Fake Out into the Aerodactyl. After the Intimidate, Cartana probably not able to knock out that Nile Ego from full health. And even using this Protect to keep that threat of Trick Room for later, just playing very slow, very confident. And I love his positioning as we go into this turn. Well, the uh, switch is coming through in the form of uh, Incineroar's bouncing around. We got pretty used to it over the past couple of months, I think, and, and definitely probably more like a year at this point. But it's, um, it's really second nature. And Incineroar switching out through the U-turn on Eric's side, uh, being able to give him a switch after seeing there's going to be any kind of those manual switches early on for Eduardo. 
And being able to do a little bit of damage and also giving your opponent the opportunity to, you know, manually switch something before you go for your own switch, I think is uh, definitely a mechanic that has been used very effectively throughout the season. Yeah, well, Eric switches his Incineroar <laughs> out for Rayquaza, and then uh, Eduardo's going to be doing the same. I don't think he's going to be able to switch for Rayquaza purely because he doesn't have one on his team, uh, but he does get to readjust and kind of reassign uh, that slot on his side of the field. He does send out the Kartana. We've uh, seen that one already, so we know that it's going to be there and know that it's not going to be a uh, huge threat while the Trick Room is up. But the big thing here is this Aerodactyl lands a Rock Slide, oh, doing a huge amount of damage to this Rayquaza with a critical hit, enough to activate its Berry. We learned about the Berry in Game 1, and uh, yeah, that damage just isn't going to stick because of the critical hit pushing him into that damage threshold to activate the Aguave Berry. It's unfortunate, but, you know, just good information, I think, for Eric that those Rock Slides from that Aerodactyl are that scary. I, I like how Eduardo has this Cartana on the field. It's not intimidated. It might get an opportunity to actually attack and knock something out. Um, but overall, just, you know, I think he had to switch there. I think he needs to continue just playing this slow defensive play, maybe using something like the Aerodactyl to, you know, keep layering chip damage down onto his opponent's Pokemon so that once Trick Room does expire he'll be ready again to take advantage of the fact that speed is finally in his favor well we get some switches into incineroars this time the old-fashioned manual switch nile ego leaving for incineroar on eric's side and of course that aerodactyl mega aerodactyl leaving for incineroar over on eduardo's side we do see that the rayquaza is becoming going to use its mega revolution right now the fervent wish reaching it that way uh, the delta stream ability coming in so could be an interesting interaction of course uh, Eric now having control of two of those primal level weathers. And Rayquaza setting up a Swords Dance. Must be feeling pretty good about what it can do. Knockoff comes through onto Incineroar. Not very effective, but it does remove the berry. May help Eduardo out a little bit later. And this board position actually rather scary, I think, from Eric. The Swords Dance boosted Rayquaza. Able to knock out either of these Pokemon on Eduardo's side with absolute ease. Yeah, that Rayquaza, I think he's going to be, you know, it has to worry about the fake out, certainly from the Incineroar on Eduardo's side of the field, but it got what it wanted from that turn. It was able to get the Trick Room up, or excuse me, the Sword Stance up fairly comfortably, even though, you know, Trick Room was still active on the field. And it's really just up to Eric now to take advantage of that. Well, he's not going to be able to take advantage of it too much. The Katana is protecting itself. Incineroar's U-turn landing onto the Aerodactyl. Very small amount of damage there. Of course, a fantastic typing to resist that. But the opportunity to adjust his board again. You have to wonder if uh, that Nihiligo is going to be coming back on the field. Uh, or the Kyogre, even. I mean... Kyogre does have to worry about Kartana's access to Leaf Blade, which we did, which we saw in Game 1, but as long as Trick Room's on the field, it is going to move first, and if it has something like an Ice Beam, I mean, Kartana's not going to appreciate that, plus like an Extreme Speed from that Rayquaza. Kartana's not going to appreciate it, or Aerodactyl's not going to appreciate it either. Oh, definitely this not. This Kyogre honestly could do a whole lot of damage. Rayquaza will try and Dragon Ascent into the Protect of the Kartana, and that's not going to be any damage down. This game, I feel, has gone a little bit slower. Both trainers still with four Pokemon remaining, but definitely some interesting advantages being carved out for both of them. You know, I really did like seeing that Rayquaza set up a Swords Dance, but in a weird way, it's not getting the maximum benefit right now because it's in a Trick Room. It really isn't, and that's something interesting to call out. Um, Eduardo, on the other hand, is just in a really tough position, you know, forced to either reveal the Groudon on his team, we still haven't seen that last Pokemon, or, you know, potentially take damage from the Kyogre this turn. Ooh. But you can stop that with something like a wide guard. Yeah, you can stop the uh, potential damage from Kyogre. Oh, no. Eric, though, revealing he has an answer to that. A single target oh. water type attack in Scald. Uh, so knowing that wide guard was a move, picking up popularity, getting talked about before the World Championships. Uh, Rayquaza free to Dragon Ascent. That would have reminded the wide guard either way. But such an interesting choice to move there on Eric's side of the field. Incineroar does go very, very low in its health, low enough to activate its berry, heal up a whole lot. Uh, this Rayquaza really suffering at the hand of those Intimidates. The Trick Room does expire, 
but such a, a kind of wasted turn for Aerodactyl there. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I think makes Aerodactyl really interesting is it's one of these Pokemon that, you know, is very offensive but does get access to Wide Guard. Unfortunately, you know, Wide Guard cannot block moves like Scald, which is, you know, it, it's kind of rare on Kyogre. I feel like a lot of people like to run something like Origin Pulse and the Water Spout just to, yep. you know, maintain that offensive pressure. But with Wide Guard picking up in popularity, the fact that Eric puts Scald over the Origin Pulse, I think is just a great play, and that knockout really goes to show it. Yeah, well, the uh, Kyogre will be sticking around for a little bit longer. Nile Ego bought back in pretty much just to eat the fake out. And there's no real way right now to stop this Geomancy uh, from the Xerneas. Uh, that's gonna be the key to victory if Eduardo's gonna find a way out. We have seen all of his Pokemon. We do now have confirmation, of course, that he doesn't have Groudon. No. So he's not gonna be able to stop this Primordial Sea boosted onslaught from Eric. And one of the best ways to do that is to try and at least boost his stats a little bit. Uh, Koga just keeping on going with the Skulls. Uh, this one's heading directly at the Xerneas, even boosted by the rain. We do see the importance of that Geomancy right there. You have to wonder, though, if Eduardo was hoping that Scald or a Water-type attack would go towards that Incineroar so he could get the Cartana in without taking damage. Nihiligo's in a great spot now to try and set up Trick Room. You know, even though the Xerneas has gotten the Geomancy boost on, it, you know, it has its stats up. It's ready to start dealing a ton of damage. I don't think it's able to knock out Nihiligo at such full health just because Nihiligo's amazing poison rock typing. Well, now's the time to see just how much it can do. Kyogre oh. does take a whole lot of damage from the Moonblast of Xerneas, but it's not enough for the knockout. Incineroar promptly felled by a Scald from this Kyogre. No real doubt about that. We'll see exactly what the Nihiligo goes for, and it takes advantage of the Trick Room. It does decide to set that back up as soon as he's seen the Geomancy here. So now this Kyogre is going to be in a much better position to deal damage and start getting knockouts along with this uh, Nihiligo. This Katana does come in, the last Pokemon remaining of the four for Eduardo, but it's kind of got a big ask right now. You know, the Xerneas is able to protect for one turn. It's going to be able to potentially knock out both of these Pokemon, but it can only pick one at a time. And Eduardo's going to have to call it perfectly. And there is also a world where, you know, Eric could just keep on going with attacks. There is, and this, which, this is what makes Trick Room such a difficult matchup, especially on teams like Eric's, where, you know, at Team Preview, it doesn't really look like a Trick Room team. You know, Nihili go fast, Tapu Koko fast, Rayquaza fast, Cartana fast, but here we are, you know, Nihili go and Kyogre together, and even Rayquaza, I think, feels pretty comfortable within the Trick Room, the way that Eric has been playing it. Eduardo just doesn't have a way to answer it, and unfortunately for him, you know, I think the Xerneas was a great adjustment, but it's just unable to to knock out this Nihiligo. And as a result, you know, he really needs to find Ooh. a way out. Okay, well, the Skull's heading towards the Kartana. It oh. does resist it, but it takes a whole lot of damage anyway. Nihiligo tries to sludge bomb towards that Xerneas. Uh, and here we see the Z move out of Kartana. Grassium Z giving us Bloom Doom. Uh, looks like he's trying to be fishing for a huge knockout somewhere down the line. I think if Eric had decided to double target into that Katana, this game could be different, but Eduardo's looking for these outs, looking for these answers to whatever he sees coming out of Eric's side of the field. And he's going to be putting himself in a better position. Bloom Doom trying so desperately to knock out this Nihiligo. And getting it. there, uh, there's a really big question now about what is going to be able to knock out this uh, Xerneas. It is a good question. You know, the Incineroar and the Mega Rayquaza are Eric's last two choices in terms of the Pokemon in the back of his party. Obviously, the Kyogre is very present on the field right now. You know, if he sends in the Incineroar, he can use Fake Out to stop the Xerneas or the Kartana from attacking this turn and maybe give Kyogre an opportunity to get another knockout. But if he picks wrong, then that would give the Xerneas or the Kartana an opportunity to deal some big damage. Knowing that Eric just sent in the Mega Rayquaza on the field, yes, the, the Kyogre's attacks won't be boosted by the water anymore, but maybe this Rayquaza can threaten the Kartana with something like the Extreme Speed. But it has to be careful for that Xerneas. It's yeah. just a very sort of tough 
way to play through this. I don't think uh, Rayquaza is here to extreme speed anything. I think the only thing Rayquaza can do is just land those Dragon Ascents. You need to be dealing more damage. Definitely. Dragon Ascent would be better against Kartana. Deal way more damage to Xerneas. If you can get anything low enough, yes, then you can start picking it off with extreme speed. But while Trick but Room's up, you need to use it. I, I, I agree, but Eric has to make the correct selection here. You know, will I attack the Kartana? Will it detect? Will I attack the Xerneas? Will I be able to knock it out? You know, this Rayquaza doesn't have the sword stance up, and everything that we've seen so far from it indicates that it is a more of a defensive set. Okay, well, Kartana's detecting, so if uh, Eric's called this, it's going to be a whole lot of trouble for him. Koga Skull heads towards the Xerneas. Right. Uh, that's going to be a good little bit of damage. May help out in some calculations. Rayquaza's Dragon Ascent oh. does head up, so we know that it's heading towards that Xerneas, and I think double-targeting that Pokemon after seeing it protect in the previous turn may make I things a little easier. Oh, it holds on! Yep, Edu's clinging oh, on in this game. Goodness. Even though Eric called it right, oh, my he's not goodness. able to capitalize. Even though he's the last thing to move, he <laughs> does land a double knockout. Oh. Eric made all Man. the correct calls, but it's just not enough. The strong winds have dissipated. It's not going to be a big deal right now. And from what looked like a bleak situation, Xerneas, that boost to its special defense, when it take, took a pittance of damage there from the uh, Scald, and then it wasn't enough to land that Dragon Ascent. It looks like Edu is going to be sending us to game three. It, it's still a bit of an ass, don't be wrong. Like, Incineroar is going to be moving first. Uh, you know, Eric could still clutch this out, but if you, there was a Pokemon you wanted left, oh, that, that is a different story. I My was, apologies. I, I was going to say, you know, Snarl will be able to get a knockout on the Xerneas, but, you know, what is this Kartana going to do? It has been intimidated. Can it find a way to knock out this Incineroar, Sacred Sword certainly will have a shot at it, but... Yep. Well, here's the big thing, right? There's no priority coming out of that Incineroar, so all this Kartana has to do now is, is stall out, out the Trick Room. room. That's going to be the key thing for Edu, and another Sacred Sword will comfortably do it. Don't forget, earlier on, the Berry was removed from play. Kartana detecting this turn. Eduardo knows exactly what he needs to do to win this game. And perfect timing as well. With one turn there left, is. Trick Room ends. And Car this Cartana will be bringing us into Game 3 of Top 16 at the World Championships. What yep. an incredibly close set from both these trainers. Coming down to literally that Xerneas hanging on by a thread, taking Eduardo's tournament along with it. What an amazing Game 3 this is going to be. Yeah, that was really exciting. And to see such nuanced play from these players is exactly what you want in the top 16 of the world championships it's now down to essentially best of one for the single elimination format we know that these trainers are ready and raring to go get back into the game there's so many things they have to think about now eduardo knows he can take those hits he knows that if he geomancies there's going to be a trick room goes up but then he knows that he can take a lot of hits really well. He saw the adaptation. He saw some good work come out of Mega Aerodactyl there. I think there's so much to think about if you're either of these trainers. You have to wonder though, Eduardo has let Trick Room essentially, you know, have its way with his team throughout these first two games. You know, he's had no speed control revealed at all on the field, kind of content to just take those hits and, you know, stall out the turns that Trick Room will, you know, reverse the dimensions and allow Eric's Pokemon to move first. I feel like one of the adjustments he has to make going into this final game to bring him into top eight is to handle that trick room better. You just can't let Eric have those opportunities to get chip damage down onto your Pokemon. I think it's, I think it, it's, it's just weird, right? Like he's got such a quick team and then he's setting up trick room. So if Edu just brings a slightly slower team, right? Maybe like get his ground on in a little bit later. He did drop the ground on for that last game. It could have been a whole lot more comfortable. I, I I'm, agree. I'm very confused to see that. I mean, it's something we haven't talked about in, in quite some time is using fast Pokemon in Trick Room. You know, Edu's not taking the bait. He's not setting up the Tailwinds. Yeah, he Geomancy, which is kind of the same, but that Geomancy was so important for the boost to his defense that he was in a great position. And being able to hold on through that one turn and double KO back with the Dazzling Gleam kept him in the game and put him in that winning position. Well, it looks like we're returning to game one here with the leads, Kartana and Incineroar out on Eduardo's side of the field. And for the third time in a row, the Nihiligo and the Incineroar out for Eric. 
you know, I have to be, I have to assume at this point, we've seen the same play over and over again. This Nihiligo wants to get that trick room up, wants to put the speed in Eric's favor. And I'm really curious to see if Eduardo is going to immediately adjust, maybe switch out one of these Pokemon on the field to take advantage of it, or if he has a different game plan in mind, he has to be thinking about this. This is what the Nihiligo wants to do. This is what the Nihiligo is comfortable with. And you have to assume after it working so well for him in games one and games two, Trick Room is on Eric's mind. Well, we'll see if there's a way to stop it. I can see one on the field, but if Edu doesn't go for it, we could be in an interesting situation. Protect, Nihiligo doesn't want to get caught by anything. So no damage coming out uh, onto that right now. Fake Out lands on the Rayquaza side, and the Leaf Blade from Kartana lands on that Nihiligo. Uh, most importantly, though, that Kartana does have access right now to something really important in its Z-Move. It does, and I have to assume that the Rayquaza coming out on the field so early, you know, even just switched in like that, we didn't even see a U-turn that turn, um, is potentially an indication of a mindset change, change from Eric. You know, he didn't go for the fake out trick room. Instead, he brought out that Rayquaza. Rayquaza does have access to the Dragon Ascent, which is going to threaten that Kartana. Maybe he's hoping that, if he, assuming that Kartana is the Pokemon that Eduardo brought to stop that Nihiligo, um, it can, you know, stop it before it gets knocked out. Yeah, well, Tapu Fini coming in in place of the Kartana on Eduardo's side of the field. Uh, certainly something that's going to be a little bit better at taking some of the hits. The Nihil Ligo leaving, so no pressure going back in that direction. Mm -hmm. And Incineroar taking its place. Both trainers a little bit unhappy with where their board position is at and just trying to mix it up a little bit to push them on into a better kind of middle of the game as we're still very much in that early game, just feeling it out, just trying to make sure you get yourself a nice opening to set something up or land a big knockout. And that Intimidate certainly would have weaken the Kartana's attacking ability. Also, you know, Incineroar is a fire dark type Pokemon. That Bloom Doom or that Leaf Blade isn't going to deal as much damage thanks to that switch. And, you know, I like how Eric went for the sword stance and the switch here. I think that he's setting up this Rayquaza to deal some, you know, quite frankly, terrifying amounts of damage in this next turn. But Eduardo does have the opportunity to switch out this Incineroar thanks to the U-turn. And you have to wonder, why was Tapu Fini the adjustment that he brought into game three? And does it have something that could potentially help him in this matchup? We'll see exactly what it can do with it. The Xerneas coming in, two fairy types staring down a Rayquaza. Always a tough ask. we have got to remember, there's now Fake Out and a Sword Stance boosted Rayquaza over on Eric's side of the field. That's really difficult to deal with. So while you may want to go on the offensive land attacks such as Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam to knock out the Rayquaza, you've got to be thoughtful about it. You can't yeah. be going and attacking willy-nilly, leaving yourself exposed to get caught by something like a Dragon Ascent. Dragon Ascent after the Swords Dancer, no Intimidates to try and counteract that are going to be very problematic. You Intimidates. There's one of them. Yeah, you can see why Eduardo immediately switched back that Incineroar. He really needed to lower Rayquaza's attack prior to it attacking this turn. Yeah, well, it's one of those things as well. It's probably going to be able to take a hit a lot better than something like that Xerneas. It's going to be the uh, victim of a Dragon Ascent as soon as it enters the field. Uh, so the Intimidate's going to help it out a little bit. Oh. Uh, not enough, though, to protect it from a full-on knockout. Most importantly here, it does get the defense drop. That may, may, think, may make things a little bit easier. And the icy wind in retaliation from Tapu Fini. Of course, the strong winds will weaken that attack. And even after the defense drop, it barely tickles this Rayquaza. It does get the speed down. That may help out in future as well. Yeah, there also is no immediate access for Eric to fake out on his side of the field. So if, Ward if Eduardo does use this opportunity to send the Xerneas back out onto the field, that Rayquaza may be forced to extreme speed or switch if Eric wants to preserve it for later on in the game. But, you know, looking at the fact that he just sent in that Nihiligo, if Eduardo does decide to bring back the Xerneas onto the field, this might be the perfect opportunity to go for something like a Trick Room. Well, here's the thing. The Nihiligo and the Rayquaza have a very clear and obvious synergy. The best answer to deal with Mega Rayquaza is one of the Fairy types, purely because the Fairy doesn't have to worry about the flying type issue that Strong Winds is dealing with. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, you bring Nihiligo, it's a poison type, it can deal with these fairies very well. It, that is 100% correct, and we've already seen the reveal of the Icy Wind on the Tapu Fini as 
well. It, it's just, it's a very interesting sort of balance here. I think Eric does have his choice of how he wants to approach the game moving forwards. You know, will he favor Trick Room as we've seen in game one, game two? Will he go immediately on the offensive? You know, Eduardo's Intimidate has been removed entirely from the field. So this Rayquaza, honestly, if it wants to keep those sword stance, it's more than happy to keep him right now. Well, Tapu Fiend is going to leave the field and be replaced by Kartana. That's obviously quite important. And we see how much an extreme speed does oh, after no. that boost. Uh, there's the follow-up sludge bomb and the Xerneas not able to deal with that at all. No boosts from Geomancy there. And it really is the driving seat now occupied by Eric Rios of Spain. Eduardo must have a plan, but his plan only relies on Kartana and Tapu Fini. We did see the Kartana go for a Z move that knocked out that Nihiligo um, from relatively full health earlier on in this match. But it felt like a lot of the offensive momentum that Eduardo was trying to set up, unfortunately, was lost with the knockout of that Xerneas. And I got to say, the way that Eric is piloting this team, a team that we've seen, you know, operate very comfortably in Trick Room throughout the first two games, you know, it's working just as well outside of Trick Room because these Pokemon are so powerful. You know, Nihiligo, Sludge Bomb, amazing typing. Um, you know, it, it's just such a strong Pokemon. You can't ignore it. And unfortunately for Eduardo, I don't think he really had the counters he needed present, at least on the field in his party in the games to stop it. Yeah, this game's been a little bit one-sided as soon as you got that set up. You know, as soon as you got that big Dragon Ascent option after the uh, boost from Swords Dance, really not many ways to fight back. Even though you're lowering your defenses with Dragon Ascent, it's just not going to be enough. No. Another knockoff, getting rid of the berry. It may help a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Katana immediately felled by this Rayquaza. These big boosted Dragon Ascents have been non-stop since he got it set up. The Icy Wind is the only bit of retaliation we can see from Eduardo Cunha. But Eric Rios very much knowing exactly where his tournament future lies. It's going to be in top eight. And just what an amazing win in this game three. You know, he hasn't lost a single Pokemon throughout this final game. He completely pivoted how he piloted his team moving forwards. And it just really goes to show you why he 